In this video tutorial, I'm going to demonstrate how to use the Dispersion 2 Photoshop action. And what the action does is takes uh, photos, breaks them apart, and shoots them into a direction of your choice. So, for this action, um, I chose up, the up direction, and you can see uh, the result there. Okay, so let's go ahead, open up your photo, and the first thing you want to check is that if your um, photo is set as the background. So, if it's not, if you open up your photo and it's called something else, just go to layer, new, background from layer, and it will set it as the background. Now, another important thing to check before uh, running the action, if you go to image menu and go to image size, the resolution here will determine how far apart the default spread of the parts is. So, uh, for example, I'll just open up these here. So this example here, I ran the action uh, at 300 dpi, and you can see the spread there. And this one here, I ran at 72 dpi. So you might want to just experiment with different resolutions. Uh, probably try, you know, start off with 200 dpi and see what you get. See if you like it, and then you can adjust accordingly. All right, so, and just another thing to, to um, keep in mind that once you change this number, uh, so I changed this 72, You'll see that the numbers here change, the width and height. Now what I like to do is if um, if I want to change this to say 200 dpi, I'll first I'll just select this, Control C to copy it. I'll change this to 200, and then I'll paste it. So then we've got the original um, pixel dimensions, but with the new resolution, which will determine how far apart those um, parts spread out. All right. Um, okay. So I might just cancel that. We'll keep it at 300. Now, what you want to do firstly is create a new layer and call it brush. Has to be all lowercase, otherwise the action won't work. And on the brush layer, uh, select it, hit B on the keyboard, grab yourself a brush, choose a color, uh, any color. And what you want to do is start brushing over your photo where you want to break it apart and shoot up in uh, a direction of your choice. So, um, to save a bit of time, I have where is it? I've brushed over these areas and what I want to do, I want the parts to shoot up into the air. Okay, so let's go ahead and load up the action. So if you go to the window menu, select actions and uh, go to this icon at the top, select load actions and then double click on the dispersion 2 to ATM file and it will appear here. Twirl the folder open and you have all your directions. So for this example, all I would do is select the up action and click play. Uh, the middle one, I'll just show you an example of what the middle one does. So here I have uh, at the top here, is the original photo going down. This is the areas that I brushed. And the bottom here is where I applied the middle action. And the middle one explodes all the parts out in all different directions. So just keep that in mind um, when using the middle one. Okay, so I'll close that. And so you select the up action, and just keep in mind that this action can take anywhere between a minute and five minutes to complete. Really depends on uh, the detail in your photo, contrast between pixels, and um, the resolution of your photo. So just hold tight and come back to it in a few minutes and see what you got. So I'll fast forward the video, and uh, we'll go from the result. So the action stopped, and this is what we got. Alright, so I'll just close the uh, actions panel and we'll go into the layer panel now. Now, a quick tip to um, quickly minimize all these folders, to collapse the folders, is if on a PC, if I hold down Control and Alt and click on this arrow here uh, on the Dispersion 2 folder, it will collapse all the folders. So, uh, Control, uh, Alt on a PC, and Command, Option on a Mac, and it will, uh, yeah. Minimize all the folders. Okay, so the top folder here, we have adjustments. So this is just a series of uh, adjust, small adjustment layers that can affect the overall look of the design. Uh, at the top here, we have the original area that we brushed. So you can see that all the parts have started to fly out from uh, where we brushed. Okay, so if you wanted to run the action again, you could just drag this up to the top, delete these two folders, and you know if you wanted to try a different resolution, 
uh, change it and then run the action again. So I'll just undo that. Uh, so where were we? Uh, before and after is just a quick look at yep, the before and after, what the action has done. Alright, add vibrance. Uh, this is just a simple adjustment layer to, whoops, we'll turn that one off. So uh, if I drag this handle around, you can see what that's doing and a bit of saturation below. So you can uh, mess around with that one. Add sharpening. Uh, just adds a little bit of overall sharpening, but I suggest that if you're moving parts around, just to leave this turned off. Because if I, if I move this layer, you can see that it overlays, basically copies the entire image, the final result, and adds a bit of overall sharpening to it. So as soon as you start moving layers around, it's going to leave a bit of uh, residue behind. So just uh, let, probably leave that one off. Bit of contrast, you can uh, select this the the word uh, opacity here, click and drag on it to adjust the overall contrast in your photo. Add color tint, if you double click on this one, you can add a bit of overall uh, coloring. So you can use this drop down menu here, scan through these if you want. Uh, add color. So you'll notice that if I turn the original one back on, it's added a bit of a uh, color grade to it. That's coming from this layer here, add color. So that's uh, one you can just turn on and off if you, uh, if you don't want to use it. All right, so we have the main dispersion 2 folder. If I turn this on and off, that one houses all the effects. So let's go inside. Parts contrast. This top layer here is, again, if I just drag this word opacity, click and drag to the left and right, it's just applying contrast to to the parts only, not to our original photo, uh, just to the broken up parts. So I just found that that, that just adds a um, bit of extra effect, overall effect. All right, so let's go down. We have all our parts in different folders, and I'll explain how all this is set up. So the top folder here is our large blurred parts. So if I turn this one on and off, you can see they're the ones that appear really close to the camera. Uh, and if you go inside, each one is layered. So you can just select one and move it around. Or you could, um, if you select one, and what I like to do is if I hold down Alt, Option on a Mac, uh, Alt, click and drag, it's a quick way of duplicating the layer. So then I can just move that around, okay? And what you can also do is uh, duplicate the entire folder. So if I right click on the folder, duplicate group, we have another folder full of our, uh, whoops, just select the folder, move that out, another folder full of parts. So you can make this as detailed as you want. Uh, if you don't want uh, a million layers here, what you can do, if I just select the folder and go Control E, it flattens the folder. So now we just have one layer uh, with all the parts, okay? So I'll delete that. And you'll notice that each one of these folders has a uh, folder mask. Uh, that's just a quick way to erase uh, parts that you don't want. So for example, if I select um, this folder mask here and I grab a black brush and say I don't want uh, this part here, I'll just brush over it and it's gone. But it's not erased, it's uh, just hidden. So if I, if I now switch to a white brush, I can brush it back in. Okay, so any parts that look a bit odd or that you don't want, uh, just use the folder mask. And what I like to do is if, say, the action's finished and there's, there's a part that looks a bit weird, you don't want it, say, for example, this part above uh, her head. So what I'll do, I'll just tick these folders on and off, and I'll try and work out uh, which folder it lies in. So large parts here, I can just brush into there. Oops, got a black brush, so that's gone. And then I'll work out, so the other folder, large blue parts in there, so that's gone as well. And what you can also do is um, the main Dispersion 2 folder has a mask on it as well. So if I just grab a black brush, I can just brush anywhere and erase all the effects, okay? So just keep that in mind. All right, so we had our large word parts and we have our small parts. Um, lots of different layers. If you move them around, that one's very small. Let's try to find one bigger. So you can see them there, and again, what I like to do is hold down Alt, click and drag, duplicate them, just like that, and keep you can keep 
moving them up further into the air if you want or you could shift select grab a cluster of layers alt click and drag to duplicate them move them up just like that alright next we have our medium parts so these parts are a little bit bigger than the small ones if I move them up in the air you can see you can see the size of those the large parts I'll move this folder around and you can see the size of those uh, don't feel you have to use all the um, folders you can if you don't want the large ones turn it off if you just want the small ones um, just turn those other ones off okay so let's just keep them all on now patches if I go inside this one uh, we have these seven layers now the patches are groups of uh, groups of parts so for example if I grab patch 3 and move that around you'll see that that's a big cluster of parts 4 you see that as well um, now keep in mind that 1 and 2 if I move them around you see those ones at the top they're like they're parts that are really blurred out uh, so it like gives the appearance that it's way off in the distance okay so one and two are those ones so keep that in mind uh, moving down now this one here is um, important to uh, know what it does so if I zoom in I should zoom in onto a hand here uh, and uh, turn this one on and off you'll see that it adds a little bit of black shadow and it's to give the appearance that the parts have, uh, see if I look over on this side, that the parts have broken off uh, from the area that we brushed. Now they will only appear over the area that we brushed. So you can see the shadow there. So if I move this down to make it more obvious, you, see, you can see it there. And they just sit underneath the parts. So if you run the action uh, and you don't want it, uh, sorry, you don't want that black shadow in, just go into the patches folder turn that one off but for for most of the photos that I ran the action with it actually it looked really good uh, so just play around with it you can move it further away or closer lower the opacity alright to back out so that's the patches folder lines uh, these are just some very subtle we're going to zoom in around here for turn this one on and off you see that those uh, lines there and there's just two of them. Let's zoom back out. So move this one around. You see that there, there's a small one and a large one. Again, you can just uh, duplicate the layers to create more copies. Um, this one here is just one by default that I have it I have it turned off. But these are large cutouts of your um, your photo. So if I, if I move this piece up into the air, you can see uh, if I just zoom in here, you can see that part there. So you can turn that folder on if you want and experiment with just moving those layers around. It can create some weird abstract effects. Uh, so yeah, but by default that's off, so just remember that. Soft motion lights, this one is very subtle. Uh, if I, it's only got a passive of 10%. If I turn this one up, you can see it's these lines here uh, that sort of blur between your part, between uh, the dispersion parts, and you know it's meant to be really subtle. So just keep that in mind. The glow, uh, the opacity of this layer is set to 30. If I drag this to 100, uh, you can just see that there. If I move it around uh, again, just a really subtle effect. Just adds a little bit. So you can play around with the uh, opacity of that. Okay, and so that's all there is to it. Uh, it's as simple as that. Just create a new layer, brush um, the areas that you want to disperse, choose a direction, and hit play. Now, another thing I want to um, show you is if you are wanting to run the action on a transparent image. So, for example, um, I've got this guy here, but the layer is not set as a background. But watch what happens when I set the layer as a background. So, I've got a layer new background from layer it fills it white in the background so you know what do you do from here all right so what i did is uh where's my exit? so here we go so i have uh the original photo 
let me just set this up. I'll turn this off. Okay, so that's what we had. Uh, our original photo, now if we go inside here, I brushed uh, onto this area, and by default you will get, um, well I got, you know, this result here. But I can't just, you know, select the background layer and erase, erase it to remove his legs. Um, I wanted to use that transparent image. So what you can do is, you know, run the action, get your result, create a new layer, um, and fill it with a solid color. So now we've, we've now hidden our background layer, so because we've got this white layer above it, and you, you know you can you can make this any color you want. So, oops, just create a a blue background. Okay. And next, what I did is if I, I imported my PNG, my transparent image, so you can see that there. But we still, um, you know, I want to get rid of his legs. I just want those parts to appear there. So what I did, I'll just delete that and I'll set this up. Don't like that blue. Uh, so what I did is I selected my uh, my transparent image, and I went down to the bottom of the layer panel created a, a mask, grabbed my black brush, and I started brushing over his legs to hide it, to hide his legs. So now all we have is the broken up parts, which is uh, a really cool effect. So you can, you can try that method on your photos, and yeah, see what you come up with. Alright, so that's it. Have fun. Uh, any questions, let me know, and I'll be glad to help.